welcome friends to this afternoon session of our first day of this three day event in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. I'm very happy to see you again. And I got a few text messages and emails from some of you about your experiences this morning. I'm happy to know that you have some good experiences of seeing some inner things of the airplane. And they were some some got glimpses of uh, uh, stuff in the astral plane, some got glimpses even of a higher plane. So these things happen. Everything can happen if you are fully concentrated and present at the third eye center behind the eyes. That's the whole secret. To be fully present, which means not scattered. If you're fully present, you will get the benefit. <laughs> The only problem is the scattering of the mind and these are all methods, meditation is a method of how to concentrate your attention within yourself, right where you are. Now I said that we will fly in the sky, not this sky, inner sky. By the way, when you fly in the inner sky, you will, you will find it overlaps this sky also which is very interesting. It's good to know how these levels of consciousness are situated, how, how they are built up in a certain structure, which is so beautiful. The physical plane consists of space and time, which is infinite. What does infinite mean? Infinite means you can go on as far as you like. In your imagination, or your actual physical visit, as far as you like, it'll still go on further. But no, nobody can go on forever. Therefore, infinity for each one of us stops where we cannot go any further. It's a limit of infinity. Which people don't realize that it's just a word, infinity. In terms of actual experience, what is it? Actual experience means how far can we imagine the spaces. No matter how far we imagine it, it ends at some point. We can't imagine any more. That's the limit of infinity. This physical universe that we're looking at is a physical sphere. It's a physical sphere of infinite measurement. That means you can go as far as you like in any direction and it can go up to infinity. That's the capacity of your infinity. When you go within and fly in the inner sky, the capacity increases. Therefore, the sphere in which the astral plane exists is larger than the sphere, though both are infinite. So it's a larger infinity than this infinity. So it doesn't make much sense to the mind but experience will show you that is so. These two spheres overlap. There is a overlapping section. Supposing you have sphere of space, one large sphere, and then you place another smaller sphere and push it into the larger sphere. There will be an overlap, like an arc here, like an arc there. Looks like a fish. This fish-like overlap is a common part of the two levels of experiences, astral and physical. So when we normally rise, we rise to the level of the overlap. That is why we still feel we are here. Our inner experience is flying is still that we can see the earth below, we can still fly, that we are still in this universe. If you fly beyond the overlap, or even have a glimpse of beyond the overlap, you start seeing more things, which is a true astral plane, and not an overlap. So in your meditations, you will experience these, so that's what I'm just mentioning. By the way, astral plane has space and time, so does causal plane. The causal plane is where the space and time is created, therefore, there's another sphere there. It's an even larger sphere than the astral plane. That infinity is such 
you can go way way beyond what you can imagine here when you are there that's the birth place of the mind and the mind has full capacity there is restricted here so because there's a much larger sphere there is an overlap between the astral and the causal also in the same shape with two arcs overlapping the lower sphere creating the upper arc the upper sphere creating the lower arc and again looks like a fish so if you are taught the teachings of reaching within to the highest plane of creation which is causal plane somebody can also say i am teaching you what the two fish represent i read in the bible that jesus christ gave two fish several thousand people and people try to interpret maybe he caught some fish from the pond and broke into pieces the whole references to these two fishes whole references to an inner experience that you can have and you can check it out with your own experiences how it fits in with the description that is given there so these two spheres the second sphere has a middle part i just explaining the structure of creation of these three levels the middle part of the upper sphere where the causal and the astral intersect has a strange bend in space and if you are in the middle which is also not a small middle it's a big middle the the big middle of that second sphere the second overlap we have a position where they bend therefore if you are there you are both in the astral and the causal plane you can see both because you are at the bend if you go up then you are only in causal if you go below you are only in astral that particular spot has been called in some of our literature as banknal or the crooked tunnel it been called the crooked tunnel just because of the bend so that is also an experience that you can have these are very highly lighted up experiences you sir i just asked in the morning did you see light yes you saw it. with your eyes completely closed when you this meditation to sit inside you will always be able to see things inside the inside does not require any outside light at all it's all lit up inside by itself all things that you will see are being seen by their own light and that is why you will have certain experiences automatically just by doing this basic exercise we did in the morning i'm very happy some people inform me of their experiences why i said we will fly because one of the experiences we can generate to draw our attention inside so if we place ourselves at third eye center operate from there think of nothing but our meditation chamber as our temporary reality while we are meditating you can see windows and you can see a sky outside if you go through the window you will find that your inner self which you saw earlier has no weight you say because it's imaginary when well, it's imaginary because it's astral therefore it's imaginary so the, the we have very wrong definition of imagination that imagination means unreal imagination only means not physically real but it is real you, if you imagine something you are imagining so therefore it is not unreal the reality of imagination is only found in the astral plane not here here it becomes unreal so that is why when you are in the center first center yourself then move to the opening which you will see in your chamber and if you see light outside and you want to fly it's very easy for you without weight to fly and your astral body can fly anywhere anytime very fast are you ready to fly yes okay let's get ready close your eyes and center yourself in the third eye center which is the center of your meditation chamber we developed in the morning center yourself see what is around you you decorated it see the decoration is still there and then see if you have any 
opening like windows on your chamber. It could be on the right side, left side, above. You just look around, sitting from the center. Stay in the center for a while and look around from there, not by moving. Just by turning at the center and looking. Now look either side and you will see an opening like a window from where you can see the light outside. Now move toward that window, inside the chamber only. Move to the window and see if you can just fly out of the window with very easy flight because there is no weight you are carrying. Look at the sky and go out and fly upwards. Fly upwards, see what it looks like outside. Are there clouds outside? Is bright sunshine? What kind of light is there? Do you see different kind of light? You can look down and you can see the planet still down below. You can see buildings, regular buildings as you fly upwards. Fly a little faster, more upwards. See if you can still feel the breeze alongside when you are flying. See when the breeze stops and you feel more stillness when you are flying. Go higher up. Enjoy the flight. See how easy it is. That body has no problem flying. Now turn around and fly back. You can see the window in the distance. Just fly back straight to it. And come back to the center and sit down there, relax. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes, welcome back. How many of you could fly? I'm very happy to see that. This was an experience of what we would say astral imagination. You imagined this. So it wasn't real because you imagined it. If you are able to become unaware of this physical body while doing meditation, which will happen if you meditate for a sufficiently long time, if you are unaware of the physical body, this so-called imaginary experience will become real. It will be more real than any reality you experience here. It's only our constant attachment to this reality, that this alone is real, which we built into our head, that makes that imaginary. The moment we release from this so-called reality by becoming unaware of it, that will become real. How many of you, when you were doing the flying, were not even sure where this body of yours, physical body is? So many of you. These experiences that you generate inside help you to become unaware of the physical body. And that's what's needed for having higher experiences. That the any steps that you take by imagining experiences inside with the inner body, 
not with this body helps you to concentrate your attention better and to have inner experiences of the next level or the overlap of the physical and astral world that we are living in now. So that is why the more your awareness is pulled away, more experiences you will have. You will be able to fly very fast. Some of you did fly fast. You can fly very fast and examine what they what we think is physical. I normally don't share my experiences, but one experience I want to share. Because that was in the, as a child. And I, I was uh, uh, learning from an elderly lady who we knew was flying. Everybody knew she flies all over the universe. So she told me flying is not difficult. I think I must have been five, six years old. Very young. And she said to fly, just forget you are here, think you are there. Imagine you are there in the head, in the center of the head, and you are not flying outside, you are flying in the sky, you are creating in the head. A simple tip she gave and somehow it worked that you should feel you are just flying. You are lying in bed here, physical bed. Just get up and fly. And I felt I was flying. And I was, as I was flying, I saw a plane flying. And the, I followed the plane. A, a, a real airliner at that time, there were very few planes. They used to land and go up. So I followed the plane all the way. That was my whole experience of flying with that reddish color with being plane, which used to land at different places then went up and eventually reached as far away as London, UK. And then I flew back. When, I, when the plane landed in UK, I saw the airport had a steeple of a church and other things which I noticed there. So I, I, I felt Maybe it's imagination, but as I grew up, I dismissed this experience. I said, maybe it's childhood imagination and children can imagine a lot of things. They have dreams of various kinds. I must have had a dream. But I remembered very clearly what the journey was. It looked so real. Much later, when I grew up and had the first chance as an adult to go to London, I went and landed at the same airport. And then name had slightly changed, but there was no church there. I, I saw the rest of the airport was there, but I, that was very noticeable, that high building. So I thought maybe I imagined something. That's a clear case of imagination. So I asked some people there that was there ever a church? They said, yes, there was right there where he saw the same type, he was demolished for the sake of expansion of the airport. I have never forgotten that incident, that this is flying in the same area where physical world is. It's not going into the higher astral world. It was a very simple flight of our astral self, which can fly anywhere in this overlap very easily. The only problem is, that we are too attached with the things outside and can't stop thinking of them. That's the only requirement, that if you can withdraw your attention to yourself, you can have all these experiences and they look so easy. Once you start having these experiences, you'll wonder why they used to look difficult at one time. They become almost second nature to be able to see all these. So that is why what we call imaginary, which I also thought was imaginary, and verification was found to be physically real. So that is why the whole object of teaching to fly with your so-called imagination here is to draw the attention within. To make sure you are not imagining by looking out here. That is why we start from the third eye center inside. That's very important. So long as you start anything, from the center of your meditation chamber, 
you can dance, fly, you can have a party, you can call people, you can do anything, it should be there inside. And some strange things will happen too. I can uh, uh, demonstrate one to you now. Let's go back to the third eye center, center of the chamber, and I'll give you some exercises. Close your eyes, go to the center of your meditation chamber, and make yourself comfortable. There's no stress or strain required for this. Make yourself comfortable, it's after all you're using imagination. So make yourself very comfortable. Behind the eyes. Very comfortably remain seated at the third eye center, center of your meditation chamber. Now get up briefly and stand up for a moment. And now sit down. Now, sing a song, one line of a song which is your favorite, sitting in the chair or sitting on the ground, wherever you're sitting in, in your meditation chamber. Just softly sing one line. Only there, not physically. Now relax in your chair. Now pick up a mirror which you had kept on the left side on your table. Pick up your mirror in which you can see your face and bring it in front of you and look at your face. Watch your face carefully in your mirror. Now put the mirror away. <coughs> Keep your eyes closed till I count five. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. I'll come back. How many of you could stand up when I said stand? Only if you could sing this one line when I said sing, without any sound coming from the physical body. How many of you heard what you sang? Very good. How many of you picked up the mirror and saw yourself? How many of you saw a different face in the mirror than you have here? How many of you saw faces changing in the mirror when you were watching? What does it mean? You are imagining this face of yours, the same face you have been seeing every day in the mirror here. Why should it be different there? Why is the face, why can it, how come when you are imagining the same thing you do every time here? You imagine looking in the mirror and you see your face every day. And when you do this little exercise, the face is different or it changes. There has to be a reason for this strange experience. You didn't try to do that. You didn't try to make a different face. Then how did it become different? This is because the images we are picking up at the astral plane are not necessarily what you have here. They can be images of yourself in a past life. They can be images even of future lives. These are images that are created and are available in the astral plane. So that is why I did this little experiment to show you that you will not always see things that you try to imagine you are seeing. You will see different things. 
you will have different experiences in meditation than you are anticipating. Okay, I want to say this, you will say something different. Why? It is different. It is not what you are imagining with the experience in the physical plane. So that is why it is different. So I am glad many of you got this experience. I have seen a young lady. I said, make sure that when you see the mirror in the inner plane, it should be this face of yours. Keep photo of yours here. The young lady, who never saw the mirror, was a man, <coughs> not even a woman. She saw the picture of a man in the mirror. She was a man in the past life. He was just showing up in this life, in the astral plane. The astral plane has many different uh, features. This is one of the features that you can pull off many experiences. <laughs> Another feature of the astral plane is that you can see some future events and you can see past events at the same time as you are in the present. It is there you discover, or scientists are discovering here now, that there is no future that is not written up. It is a future already laid up. When the causal plane lays down the timeline, it is laid down at once. Not that it will be generated as we go along. The timeline of past, present and future is all generated at once with events loaded on them at once. All events are already loaded. But we go through that, we are going through a time machine. People are inventing a time machine, we are going in a time machine. This physical astral self is a time machine. We are moving along a time machine and we are not thinking we are moving on the time machine, we are thinking time is passing through us. Well, that happens when we are driving a car and something moves the other side, we think we are moving. It's just an illusion. So the, we are having the illusion here that time is passing, we don't know what is ahead and what will happen. Maybe we'll take a decision that will change that. It's only when you have the visions and the glimpses of the astral and causal plane, you will discover the timeline was laid once, all events were loaded at the same time, destinies were made based upon those events. They all manufactured in the causal plane. So these are possible experiences you will have. But one word of caution, please go slow on this path, not fast. Somebody will say, why go slow? Because with our background of awareness and our background, we can get shocked by some of these experiences because we are trained to look at the world that this is the only reality and suddenly we find this is not real. That's a shock by itself. And supposing you can see the people you love, the people you have been attached to, all being manufactured there for as an experience, it's a shock. So. Don't be in a hurry to do this thing. Meditation should be done steadily. Great master used to say, it should be done darja by darja, stage by stage, step by step. Take baby steps if necessary. Because when these experiences come, some of them may be too shocking because they are not connected with our own knowledge of physical reality. So just a caution. Now, in order to sustain this, experience, we are using mantra and I said the mantra has to be used, Simran has to be used to squeeze out the words of mind, thought. Thought is taking us out. Nothing else is stopping us from going within to any level except our own thoughts. And those thoughts are connected with what experiences we have had outside, what desires we have had outside what attachments we have had outside. These are the thoughts of desire, attachments and experiences outside that are keeping us outside. The method we are using in meditation is to put our attention so much inside that for some time, not forever, for some time during meditation, 
we forget those thoughts outside only think of what is happening inside we generating more activities inside and once we do that we are able to have the experiences of different levels of consciousness now some people think they show me charts you know i i know there is a chart there is a physical plane above that and they point out with this like there is astral plane above that causal plane above their spiritual planes as if they are all existing in space outside nothing is existing outside that is not the order in which you will see it. the order is within more within more within they are not hiding somewhere that we have to go there there is no spiritual journey except the journey of opening up your awareness some people say when will we go to our true home really and i when i surprise them you are in your true home right now it's only an awareness that you need they can't believe it then if we are already in our true home where is the big problem there is no problem <laughs> we are only creating problems by temporarily forgetting that we are in the true home then feeling we are in a different place we have created this then we created more and ultimately we are creating a variety of experiences which we call words creations an experience is being called creation when we use the word creation it looks like it's set up separately outside of us experience is our experience inside one the word creation means objective and experience means subjective and we don't realize what we are calling objectives are all subjective this comes to be known much later in meditation but you will get to know how the power of consciousness which is life the power of consciousness and the ability to be conscious of anything and whatever it become conscious of become creation that is how this whole experience is being generated but we think once it generated and we forget the other part then this becomes the reality so in a way we have created levels of realities not levels of illusion or levels of imagination we create levels of realities they only become unreal when we become unaware of them take the example of dream states for example we all have that higher states very few have but the dream state we all have we all go to sleep and have dreams when we are in a dream state we are unaware of the physical body therefore dream looks real the dream looks so real we can laugh in it scream in it be frightened in it scared in it and wake up thank god it was a dream but while the dream is on it is reality for us what makes a dream real the unawareness of our physical awareness that's as simple as this is the same truth that applies all the way is the unawareness of our own truth and ultimate reality that's making us have these experiences each one looks independently real and there's one interesting fact when we have a reality created by this experience like this physical reality it will be real for us and nothing else is real not even our true home so my saying we are at a true home doesn't make any sense when we are sitting here just like in a dream we people tell us you are somewhere else you know we don't know we are here what is the dream location when we wake up only then the experience that we were thinking is real becomes real the dream remains real till we wake up when we wake up we know it was a dream we don't need any proof of that somebody said what is the proof that astral experience exist i put a counter question when you go to sleep and wake up in the morning what is the proof that you have woken up why don't you say why don't you think it could be the dream going on still in another state no i know when i am awake have you ever tested or take or looks for any proof of wakefulness in the morning when you wake up 
do you pinch yourself am i real was that real or not what makes it real i'll tell you the answer what makes it real is you remember you went to sleep as simple as that and you don't have to open your eyes to be awake you're lying in bed exactly as you're lying you have a dream you awake you know you're awake don't have to move your hands don't have to open your eyes you know you're awake why you suddenly remember that's where you slept memory connects you to the to a more wakeful experience is the same thing true of astral plane and causal plane when you awake to those planes you remember you were there much before you came into the physical in other words it's exactly like a dream like state become dream like state at one time we can experience only one reality that's the nature of creation nature of having experience to make it real you have to have only one real experience so therefore now our physical reality is the only reality at this time nothing else is real except this physical reality others we can imagine we can think of it we can meditate on it but this is our reality this real body is our reality we can't we can't get rid of this reality if we went to the astral plane that will be the only reality this physical will become unreal if you stay long enough disconnected from the awareness of the physical that become the only reality and more real than the physical just like the wakeful state is more real than the dream state when you go to the causal plane that's the only reality both astral and physical and dream become dream like and unreal at one time we experience only one reality and all this can be found through meditation as we go into those wakeful states higher wakeful states we discover they are real and then when we come back this becomes real it does not mean that once we have discovered their reality people have had great experiences in that higher plane knew it was so real but it was in meditation sometime in dream like state when they were back here it was so real but now they are in this reality that is still looking like a dream when it was on it looked like absolutely real more real than this and when we are back here this becomes real how could that be real this is the reality this is very important to remember that we are at one time only experiencing one reality and even if we move downwards we forget most of that and we also think this is the only reality of a dream like experience most people call their higher experiences which are so real when they had it when they come back it's some kind of a very beautiful dream why because if this is the only reality that has to be a dream when you go there this becomes a dream it is just a matter of where your attention is where you are operating as a conscious being so there is why because we have only one reality at a time and we are doing this experiment of finding our true home in the physical plane and we temporarily go to those areas so when we come back sometimes these experiences may look to you like dreams but the test whether it's a dream or not is what you felt there there you felt absolutely absolutely this was more real than the physical which is true it can be real physical so there is why we do not know the truth about our own true home in which we are sitting and having these dream like we probably dreaming after dreaming after dreaming six the dream we are having and we say this is the only reality the only place that i know of where you can see all the realities and all the illusion at the same time is in our true home that means if your consciousness reaches the level of discovering the truth about yourself you discover all the realities were created right there <coughs> nothing was created outside of it there nothing outside the outside is part of an experience created from there and that is our true home that is why perfect living masters those who have reached the true home in this physical life and the physical body they are even in the physical body constantly aware of all levels of 
reality created by them and they all know these are experiences created and we call them realities. So they deal with every reality according to that. They are human beings, just like us, human beings. But their awareness stretches to their true home where they discover everything was made there. Nothing is outside. We are all there. The whole creation is there. But it has been separated by division of our consciousness, division of our awareness. So it's a very interesting thing. Very hard for the mind to understand. Maybe it's impossible for the mind to understand how we can be creating everything in one space where there is no time and space. Even time is being created there. But when we go stage by stage, we discover, oh, this is later, this is earlier. When we go to sleep and have a dream, we don't go anywhere. It's not another land that we are going to, nor in level, nor up or down, nor on the side. The dream is taking place within ourselves, not anywhere outside. But we create space and time for the dream. A separate space and time for the dream, not this one. A person had a dream and he saw a very old building he had never seen. And he asked the people there, how old is this building? I have never seen this. They said this is about 1400 years old. So he could imagine that 1400 years back this thing building and I never saw and I had to come back to this particular area on the planet where this building existed, very happy. And he said, uh, has it always been open or was it also covered sometimes because there's something missing? They said, no, only the sky opens it up. So it looks at beautiful sky. The sky is different colored also. He said, what happened? The building can change the color of the sky. Very strange experience. And then he spends a lot of time he spent a few days searching around, seeing the whole area, and then he wakes up. It was a dream. The dream lasted seven minutes. There was no space. Where did the space come from? Where the old building, where did time come from? That experienced a time of 1400 years, which accepted as real. It was created inside, not outside. Dreams are never created outside, nor is this world created outside, nor any other creation created outside. They are all created inside our true home where we belong. The most interesting thing is that we can find our true home. So I am only giving you little information so that you know where, the, where we are heading for. The, the destination is so remarkable, wonderful, it's everything, it's total. I couldn't find any other term for our true home except calling it totality of consciousness. These are also imperfect words because when you say totality, it means something else can also be non-total. There is no exclusivity at all in the house that we belong to. That's our true home. And in the true home, this whole thing is taking place dreamlike. So the, these are things which are just for your information and giving but they are all accessible to a human being in the physical plane, created here separately from the, all the others, whereas there is no separation there at all. And we discover how the separation is created. I must tell you why separation is created. As I said in the morning, one of the spiritual qualities we have, spiritual attributes we have, is love. And I spelt it out in English, L-O-V-E, love is a spiritual attribute. We all have. It comes from our true home. Because it's a spirit, it's a spiritual thing. That is why it's always there right to the top. And it's a very basis of, it's basically used in creation. But love is love. Not a lover or a beloved. Imagine, we can know about love, but do we know anything about lover or beloved? No. Can we experience love as we know experience? No. That justifies separation and creation. 
whatever is there to make it into an experience at different levels and all levels we do the separation the separation is to generate the experience of that which are attributes of our true self the attributes are all the same but we generate these experiences by creation of this kind here we can love somebody is the same love but we have somebody to love if we, if it were merely love there was nothing except the attribute the quality of love so the very yanare yan the reason raise on the altar for the creation of all levels of creation is to generate experiences where the original attributes can be experienced in different forms and that's why it's created like that the variety that we can create even with love is immense all attachments are also expressions of love all <coughs> infatuation people have are also manifestations of love everything that pulls itself plants pull each other their love everything grows with love everything reproduces with love the whole world all levels of consciousness are operating on love what a wonderful thing but if it was love without all this creation is not does not become an experience it remains an attribute so that is why these attributes the complete awareness knowledge of everything complete awareness of knowledge is total intuition exists there in the total in a true home all the attributes there there is a book called anurag sagar translated ocean of love some of you might have seen it in the ocean of love in a story way like every way we have to tell stories of creation because nobody can explain creation so we tell the story there this says that our ultimate true father had 16 sons he had 16 children and who are the children what is their name patience passion things like this now these are qualities attributes but for to make a story they described as children because we understand it they must be like human beings that they are separate the attributes of the truth are being described like a story because that's the way we can understand it so there the attributes are all intact you put all of them together they all exist they become experiences over here so we are experiencing them here and we can go backwards and find the source of those i am saying all these things to you because in many cases i found people who have meditated for a long time when they meditate correctly which means from third eye center they can have all these experiences and glimpses not sustained experience they just have a glimpse and they will know it's that but they won't say how couldn't we stay there these glimpses can come at any time because they are nowhere outside they are all inside you can just like peeping in one stage or another one experience or another so that is why i am mentioning these because you will come across don't be surprised by it that is how the whole structure of creation is all your questions about life about creation about god will be answered just by your meditation with it all the answers are inside you and all the effect what is there is explaining to you everything so i am just highlighting the possibility that we have in meditation now when i talk to you in the morning about the importance of listening why was i saying that because there is a sound that comes from the soul i call it sound can there be sound in that state without time space no then why am i calling it sound because in the physical plane where we are sitting it looks like a sound it appears sound it can be heard as a sound it is audible there's an audible sound coming from our self deep self 
at the third day center all of us are having it some can hear it sometimes some cannot hear it some don't hear it because the attention is all outside the more attention you will put inside the more clearly that sound will be known to you and can be heard that sound that comes from your own self it is sound here so this is a great thing that there is a sound coming from self in the physical plane so we can follow the sound more easily to our own self what could be a better way of collecting our attention on the, on the self listening is a helpful thing because by listening to the sound of the self you can concentrate your attention on the self much faster than by trying to create the sound by repetition of words or otherwise people sometimes send me tapes recordings of spiritual sounds mystical sounds meditational sounds taken from the rivers forests and so on the natural sounds they say these are the real natural sounds for meditation just play the tape and listen no matter how hard i try when i try to listen to a meditation tape outside it is outside i can't make it inside whereas the sound that pulls you inside is inside what happens is if you hear the sound inside you say wow that is almost like the sound they were trying to send me outside so there's a resemblance in the sounds outside and inside you can hear many sounds but there is a sound closer to the self in the physical plane than other sounds and that sounds like a bell a big bell tong like that this is sound of a big bell tong let me remove that i'm saying tong actually let me remove the d and then say tong it's a something like this i'm just trying to copy here i'm not a very good imitator so <laughs> but this is a sound that is generated by the self when it is covered by the mind when it is covered by the senses and is covered by the body through this covering the sound is a coming in when the com- coverings are removed the sound will change so therefore this sound that is coming from the self in the physical self is a good starting point to go and concentrate your attention within but when we try to hear the sound by closing our eyes or even closing our ears we don't hear it it needs attention inside to hear the sound same secret again secret of putting your attention inside to hear the sound therefore when we repeat the words of of mantra or simran and start listening to them and practice them it become easier to hear the other sound so therefore this simran and repetition helps us to reach the sound that is coming from the self when we try to get your attention more and more inside you will hear sound coming from all sides there is no place on this universe that i can visit or have visited where there was no sound there is always some sound from the movement of trucks or things sound of your own breathing that you feel sound of your heart beat if you do one japanese meditator he met me at a conference and he said i have built a sound proof chamber for meditation a glass chamber in which there is no sound it's sound proof even the air for breathing is kept at the lowest possible level so there should be no sound of the air coming into the big glass chamber i said i'd like to visit that chamber and i did go there it's about 40 miles out from tokyo this is ashram and he has a lot of people practicing meditation there but he built that for himself to go to soundproof state so only inner sound can be heard and not outer sound when you go there you can hear your heart beat like you never heard before like you get palpitation get going on you can hear your breathing so strong never heard it is the lack of that stillness and silence outside that is making us hear them not hear them now this is like white sound surrounding it us so that is why 
the sound that comes inside is along with other sounds from outside and inside. When we listen to the sounds which are inside during meditation, you should listen to any sound for practice. Starting with the sound of the repetition of your own words. That's also sound. Now, sound has been described as a word has been used in some Indian literature, a shabd. Shabd means the word. A shabd, literal translation is a word. The same word that occurs in John's Gospel in the Bible, in the opening verses, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. No better definition of God exists according to me than the word was God. And I 100% agree with the definition. Same definition is given in the Hindu Vedas, where the Rig Veda says, in the beginning was the Nard or the sound. And that created the creators and then levels of creators. So we are talking of something that is audible. A word that we speak you are listening to me, it's a spoken word, it is sound. Sound made into a language. This sound is called in our uh, local scriptures, Varanatmak Shabd. A word that can be heard or spoken, a word that can be written. So what can be spoken, written like language is Varanatmak Shabd. When we go within, we don't, we start with Varanatmak by meditation of the Simran repetition of mantras. It converts to the inner sound, which is then described as Don Atmak Shabd. That means it's merely a melody, a sound, not words created out of it. And therefore words are separate in different languages. The melody is the same in all languages. So that is why it converts to a melody and we call it Dhunath Bhakshab. Then the Dhunath Bhakshab, when you go to causal plane, again changes. It looks like when you enter the stage that you were always hearing the sound when you were not even there. This experience does not happen anywhere else. That you go to a state and you say, yeah, I have been hearing this all the time. Well, you weren't even there. How could you be hearing all the time? No, you were there all the time. You just went to sleep for a while. It doesn't mean that you were not there. This is a great experience of awakening at the causal plane. When you hear the sound that is always being heard by you, that is why we change the nomenclature from Dhunatmak, we are calling that Anhad a Shab with no boundaries. It is always there. That's why the word Anhad has been used. Then we go higher up, there is no space-time and you can't hear any sound at all. We still call it the word or the sound because there for the first time we discover what we call the Shabd or the word was our own self. This was expression of the self available to us at these three levels, including the physical level, which creates the sound. Now, if you understand this setup, it becomes a great, beautiful way of discovering yourself by listening to the sound of the self. That is why the teaching of the great master, which I learned and which I'm practicing, is called Surt Shabd Yoga. Surt means attention, Shabd means sound, Yoga means union with your true self, highest self. So putting attention on the sound leads to the highest yoga. That's Surt Shabd Yoga. And I find it true. My experience validates this. That when you can use your own sound of words and reach the inner sound, drop the words, go on only with the sound within, that sound will change. But do not go with the sounds that are around the center. Only the sound that appears to be right within you, where it's coming from where you are. The sound that comes in you seems to be just spreading out from where you are sitting there. And it can come at any time if your attention is inside. So this practice of listening to the sound within of your own self is an ideal practice. 
much faster than merely mantra and can be practiced by anybody. Just reach that point of getting the attention on the sound, then hold your attention on the sound and you will get the higher levels automatically. So that is why I want you to now see if you can hear the sound. Would you like to hear the sound within your own self, which is the sound of the self? It may sound different at different times because the sound can vary from like a, like a whistle blowing, like a long single beep going on, like little birds chirping, like little crickets chirping, like, like, uh, like thunder sometimes. It's sound that are not connected with outside at all. But they, just by putting attention inside, start coming in. These sounds are all over. But try to find the sound that is coming from the center where you are seated. You are meditating in the center. See which sound is closest. Now you may find that some sounds are louder than the other. But they are not the sound that are really coming from the center. Center sound can be weak in the beginning because our attention is scattered and is gathering itself to the center. So while the attention is gathering to the center, it's picking up other sounds first. They look louder. And this looks weaker. But the more you concentrate on the center, automatically the central sound will become louder. The other sounds, or the other sounds I'm mentioning, they are sounds that come on the periphery of the center. And sometimes they mislead. Many people get misled by listening to any sound. Somebody said that we have read that you should listen to the sound in the right ear and not in the left ear. Left ear is negative power, right ear is positive power. Therefore, people have told me I have been listening to the sound in my ear. Maybe tinnitus, or maybe, maybe it's a disease or something, but I have been hearing it in my right ear. I said, how much did you see the higher planes? Oh no, I just hear the sound. That is my meditation. That's a waste of time. The center does not exist in the right ear or the left ear. The center exists in the center. The very reason why masters have sometimes suggested that if you hear sound from both sides, prefer the one on the right, has a reason for the structure of the brain. That there is the right side intuitive and the left side is rational. We are trying to go more to the intuitive side. That's the only reason that the attention will go to the sound. Keep your attention on the intuitive side. That's the whole purpose of saying, okay, if you hear sound both ways, try to hear the right side first. But none of the sounds that come from the right or left has any pull in it to pull you to yourself. Only the sound that comes from the center pulls you up. And that is why it takes a while. This also takes time. You need patience and practice to listen to any sound for practice. I call them all practice sounds. Except the sound that sounds like the long peal of a bell. That is here. No wonder bells are used in belfries, used in churches, used in temples, used everywhere. Sounds are used everywhere in all places of worship. But we worship outside sounds. The intention was to put attention on the inner sound. So, if you are able to repeat the words and repeat them loudly if necessary, so that you can listen to them attentively, you will see other sounds can be heard. You can drop the repetition and switch over to the other sound. Let's try. Let's try to get the sound within. If you think that blocking your ears will help you, you can temporarily plug it. Otherwise, you can just try it like this. Place yourself in the center of your meditation chamber and repeat the words of your mantra simran loud enough to be heard with attention. Put all the attention. And when a sound comes, especially near the center, switch over to the sound.
stay in the center. Listen with full attention. Put all your attention on listening. Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back.
How many of you were able to hear the sound within? Pretty good. <coughs> Pretty good. <clears throat> this needs practice. Practice of putting your attention inside. That is why the repetition of the words becomes a lengthy process. Because only when you are able to listen to the words that you are repeating with attention, then the other sounds can be heard. So that is why it is important to use the mantra or repetition or simran for as long as you can so that you reach the sound. When you reach the sound, you can drop this. If your sound becomes weak, you can go back to listening to the words which are being repeated by your own self and your own mind at this level. So the sound will really help you to withdraw faster. Repetition of words, listening to repetition of words can also do the same thing. It's somewhat slower process. So when you get a chance to pick up a faster express way through the sound, pick it up. The Varanatmak spoken sound which you are using for Simran or Mantra becomes Dhunatmak when it becomes just a continuous sound becomes Anhad, where you find you are hearing it all the time, becomes Sar Shab in what we call Parabrahm or beyond the mind. That is where it becomes your own self. And that's where it's called Sar Shab. Sar means real. That's the real Shab. Real Shab is yourself. And if you uh, stay with the real self, then you expand into totality. The next step, which is very difficult. That cannot be achieved without the help of somebody on the other side. You, there is no way we can pull ourselves. There are no means available to us to pull ourselves beyond the discovery of our own self. Even the discovery of our own self is a very rare event if it happens by itself. Otherwise, we need, we need somebody inside beyond our minds to pull us and that is where the role of a perfect living master comes in. A perfect living master is just an ordinary human being like us but his awareness at all times is of the highest level which means all levels. He will talk to us here as a physical being just like us ordinary person. In the uh, inner stage, where we see him radiant, like other things are radiant there, no outside light is needed, we call it the radiant form. The radiant form will talk to us like our radiant form needs and will tell us a lot more than he tells out here in the physical plane. Go to the causal plane, he's still there with us. And when you go to the self, he's still there with us. So therefore, this is a true friendship and true companionship you can find, which goes all the way through the meditational process. And this is the role of a perfect living master. It only at the end we discover that the perfect living master was a means. For, it was not that somebody was giving us anything. It was self-created means by the self. To find our own self, we are creating it. If we are creating everything else, why not... Uh, the uh, image of the perfect living master. If the whole thing is being generated by the mind, the image of a perfect living master in a physical form is also being generated the same way. The whole secret is that we, it is only one self, the total self, that generates all experiences, including the experience of a perfect living master. It's only at that stage we find perfect living master was no one else but our own true self. We can't see or experience our true self. Therefore, it appears symbolically as a human being outside. And we then follow. We are following instructions. We, we laid out for ourselves earlier how to go to our true home. And he appears in our life as he is somebody else. Like everybody else looks like somebody else. They are all one. They are all coming from the same source. So similarly, the perfect living master appears. And at the end, we discover he was our own self appearing as a perfect living master and the 
the self is the perfect living master if you know the real self. So that's a very amazing experience that some that we think something is different than what it actually is. Well, everything else is different. We think it's all real here. The reality is only in our true home where everything is together. The only reality is the self. The experiencer, not the experience. And the experiencer exists immortal at all times. The experiencer never dies. The experience dies. The body is an experience. This world is an experience. All experience dies at some point or the other. The experiencer never dies. That is the self. It's the power of the self that generates all experience. And we return to our awareness of the self. We've discovered everything. The whole thing. That is what is possible while we are physical human beings. It is not possible if we are not physical human beings because only physical human beings have been given a special gift called free will. We think we take decisions, we can make up our own decision. This is a great feeling, not a feeling, it's a great experience to be able to make your own decision, to make your own destiny, to make your own future. It looks, we do everything ourselves. This is experience of free will. If this experience was missing, We'd be no different from the trees and the insects and the birds. They don't have to make any decision. They just live according to their <coughs> destiny, built into their instincts, and they live and die. We have, a, we have experiences where choices are given. You want to go here or there? You want to be here or there? You want to make, make it or not? You want to postpone it or do it today? All these choices are only available when free will is available. And free will is only available to human beings, not even to the angels, not even to the inhabitants of astral causal planes, because they have knowledge of the future. Their free will becomes like instinct here. When our instincts function here, we act automatically. We don't control them. But thoughts and decision making, we control. It is this power of free will that makes us seekers. Seeking is an option we take. When we seek the truth, we are making a decision. And that is why this human body is a very valuable thing. The most valuable thing in this whole creation here at the physical level. That is why you take full advantage while you are here. It's a short time. Nobody lives forever in the physical body. Nobody has ever lived. Even immortal beings, we are all immortal beings, living in a very short frame, a human body. Take full advantage of this opportunity. This opportunity doesn't come all the time. Because we do not know if there are other life forms that we can go and experience also. They're according to Indian traditional scriptures, they say we take so many forms, 8.4 million forms have been mentioned, which a soul can take. Same soul that we are having. And we are trapped here by time and space. We think it's freedom to be have a space. People want more space, more trap. It's a big trap to be trapped in time and space because we can't get out of it. There is no way somebody can say, I am going to have a thought which is not in time and space. It doesn't exist. Every thought takes time. Every experience of ours here takes time. And the one that are not taking time, we ignore them. So that is why we are trapped by time. And the escape from time is when we escape the mind. That's the escape from time. It's possible here. Now I said that you have to be pulled by somebody to go beyond the mind. Because all meditation, no matter what kind, no matter how often, no matter how hard, all meditation is a mental activity. When we say, let's repeat words, mind is doing it. Let's do this, do that, mind is doing it. 
Let's meditate. Mind is doing that. We sit and try to put attention. We make an effort. I and mind are there to make an effort. Everything we are doing here is mind. Physical meditation, mind. Astral meditation, mind. Causal meditation, mind. I, the ego, is always there participating in any effort, including meditation. And we, again, the mind has been trained to feel unless you make an effort, you can't get anything. You have to struggle for everything. So the mind says it's a big struggle to find your own self. What an obvious fallacy it is that to find your own self should be a struggle. But the mind has made it a struggle. Mind puts obstacles by attachments outside, by desire. Desires create more attachments. And therefore, we are trapped in time and space through the mind. The mind cannot help us to go to our true home. The mind cannot help us to find who we are. Then what is there above the mind that can pull us? Something that exists where reason does not exist. Something that exists where thinking does not exist. And I mentioned in the morning, love exists. Love exists even above. Therefore, if love pulls us from above, we can cross the mind. This is one of the big roles that a perfect living master performs, that he continuously appears physically here, radiant form, astrally inside, more, more availability in the radiant form, more complete availability in the causal plane. And then we discover that he is not operating from any of these levels, he is operating with awareness of the higher level and his love pulls us. You will notice if you have had a chance to see any perfect living master, you will notice that what draws you to that perfect living master is not reason, it's love. There is something that pulls us to a perfect living master which we can't even explain. It's the higher love coming from there. Not its modifications into becoming your different kinds of attachments and other attractions and so on. Original love. What's the definition of original love? I give you a very brief definition. It is totally unconditional. There is no judgment in fault in true love. If the judgment, oh, I love that person is better than that, it's not love. No condition attached. A perfect master, if you love him, he will love you. If you don't love him, he will love you. If you hate him, he will love you. If you kill him, he will love you. That's called unconditional love. Human being, a human being exists. These human beings exist of that kind, giving us unconditional love. And this is a unique characteristic of all perfect living masters that their love is always unconditional and is so touching it does not, their love does not hit our, our mind or our body or our senses. Their love hits directly our soul. We don't even know what is pulling us. I sometimes mention the story of a professor Good professor, I became a good friend of his. The professor was an intellectual professor, but he was a great student of uh, spirituality, mysticism, discovery of the realities, studied all the books. He came to great master and he said, Master, I have studied all these things, but there is really nothing existing. These are theoretical models made up. And the psychologist can explain these things, how the, by psychological suggestions, you can see everything. It's not real. There's a great power of suggestion. You suggest to somebody that this is happening inside. You can see people hallucinate, people make all pictures just by suggestion. There's nothing real. You are, told Baba Sawan Singh, you are misleading the people. We're telling them there's a real true home and we can go to our true home and do meditation. No such thing. Please don't mislead them. This is my prayer to you. The great master said, Professor, 
you have a right to your opinion. Your experience shows you what opinion you have expressed. My experience is different. We have a right to disagree on what different experiences we have had. So my experience shows these places exist more really than even this. Your experience denies it. Let's be, let's be content with what we have. The professor went away. Next weekend he was back. He said, Master, I've come to tell you, please do not teach things that are not real to people and call them real. These are not real. They're all made up. These gurus and saints have just gathered something together. It's a big clique and they all make up the stories of higher regions existing. None of that exists. Please don't tell, mislead people. Great Master again said, we have difference of experiences and therefore difference of opinion. I am not criticizing you for saying what you are saying because that's your experience. But my experience is different. So don't we have a right to believe our own experiences? My experience is different. But thank you very much for your honesty in advising me like that. Professor went away. Third week and he was back again and said the same things. Great Master said, Professor, you came twice earlier to say the same thing to me and I explained my position. Why, why is it necessary for you to come and tell me the same thing again? He said, I don't know, but I just like to come and see you. <laughs> I have no idea why I come. I don't believe in you, but I'd like to see you. Later on, he became one of the finest initiates and meditators from Great Master. And then, this professor had another problem, which he mentioned to me when he was on his deathbed. He called me, I said, he said, I am dying, but I want to tell you something. That in spite of my being PhD and a master in this language and that, and having high qualifications, I was always poor. I never got a proper job. I've always been sick. I've had a very bad karma and very bad destiny of my life. And he said, I am responsible for it. I said, why do you say that, Professor? He said, I asked for these things from the Great Master. He said, when great, I found out Great Master has all the power, I said to Great Master, please give me poverty, please give me all illness, please give me all this humility, please give me as low as you can, so I can be humble enough to go, to go with you. He gave me whatever I asked. So he said to me, please never ask for these things, <laughs> ask for the best. While you are here for a short time in this world, ask for the best, even here. Why should you ask for something less when you know there is somebody who can give you more? So ask for the best and not what I asked. And after that, the professor died. A very interesting person, very highly educated, but somehow his destiny became what he asked for. So his wishes were fulfilled into poverty and all that. Where did the ideas come to him to ask for that? He said from the scriptures. He said, a rich man cannot go to heaven. He said, I have read many scriptures. There is no chance for rich people to go there. It's easy, easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle, but not a rich man to go through. Poverty is the only secret. Therefore, I ask for poverty. He said, if you ask for health, then you have to stay here to get healthy bodies. I didn't ask for health. I asked for illness instead. So he had his own strange justification for asking these things. But he advised me, you are still young, never make that mistake. I said, no, I am never going to make this mistake. I have a separate deal. <laughs> my deal is, Master, take away all my worries. Give me all the happiness. Master granted my wish also, like he granted yours. So always ask for the best. Don't, don't think he's just an ordinary human being. Looks ordinary, functions ordinary, looks like any one of us, but a perfect living master is not ordinary at all. He is aware of 
all levels of consciousness at the same time, which only happens at the top and nowhere on the way. All along the way to our spiritual home, we can only be aware of one level of reality, one level of creation. It's only at the top we realize the whole thing happened there and everything is there. A friend of mine said, when we go to the top, is it all one? I said, yes. He said, I'm not going there. <laughs> I like my friends. I want company. What the good of going somewhere where you are only lonely alone? That is extreme loneliness. That true, true home is extreme loneliness if there's only one. And I said, the only problem is that one contains all of us. And from that one, you can experience all who are sitting here and many more who sitting elsewhere. They're all part of one. And that one can experience all of them at the same time as he experiences one. The one and the many are happening there in the true home. The one, that is the attributes of the one are being experienced by the many right there. It's only a devolution of that experience that other levels are created to give a variety of experiences. Consciousness is fully active to become conscious of all its possibilities. And that's how the worlds are created. The power of consciousness to be conscious of anything it likes with no limitation is what creates all levels of experiences and all creations. So that is why you are going to the source of totality of consciousness. Where everything is generated there as you can have that experience there even when you are a human being, yeah, that's the beauty of it. A physical human being can have that consciousness, awareness. Awareness is different from anything like an object. It's not an object. It's knowing. It's real knowing. Real knowledge, real awareness is, is something inside us. And once it comes, you know everything. And once you know, you are at all places at the same time. That's the beauty of it. I'll take a break now. Tomorrow I'll tell you more about how to go above the mind, which is very important in true spiritual part. Taught by my master that you want to be spiritual, reach your spiritual goal, must go above the mind. Otherwise, all goals are mental goals. There are many sadhus, swamis I've spent time with. I have searched very hard on the structures of my own master when he initiated me. Find something better, I tried to find something better. And none of them even reach the lower planes. They give you a little idea of your out-of-body experience and they think it's a spiritual experience. Not at all. You go into different kind of forms of yourself. That's not spirituality. Spirituality when you discover who is going through those forms. Who is the self? What is the true self? <coughs> Who are you that can have forms? Who are you that creates forms? That's the true spirituality, to find the spirit, to find the soul, to find the reality. I'll talk to you and lead you through some meditations tomorrow for that purpose, to go beyond the mind. Thank you very much. We'll take a break now.